What's up friends, I'm Luca from Pokemon TCG Austria and today uh, we have another video for you. Actually this is our series Pixel Nationals. Last time Lucas did the same thing with Greninja and today I'm going to talk about Night March. I think everybody of you knows how Night March works. And the thing is that we thought that Pixel Nationals could be a cool series because of the upcoming European Nationals. Um, this is without Fates Collide because uh, the four European Nationals happening this weekend are without it. And afterwards we are going to feature some decks with the new cards. So sit back, relax and enjoy this video. Um, as you probably just noticed there are 58 cards here, not 60. That is because I'm going to discuss different matchups. And therefore we're going to change a few cards. So actually this is the most common skeleton build that I have seen and that I played myself as well. Uh, I tested this deck. Um, so like practically the four offs here are very important for this deck. You just you can't cut one card. Battle Compressor versus Seeker Train is made, Ultra Ball and Pass of Time. Same goes for the Night Marches. And free shamans here. Uh, so here we're coming to the supporters. Um, that's the most common way of playing it. So uh, let's say you, pre you prepare for a tournament and you expect many toad variations. For example, toad giratina. Um, it was similar at the ECC that many many Nightmarch players expected toad giratina, and therefore. They tacked a few cards in it, and these two cards. So now we have 60 cards. These two cards are Enhanced Hammer and Xerosic. Um, actually, if you play Enhanced Hammer um, and your opponent tries to set up turn one with Giratina and Double Dragon Energy, you can use Enhanced Hammer to discard that uh, energy and uh, set him back for one turn. Uh, if he attacks, if he decides to attack with Toad, you can discard his DCEs with Sclerosic. And if he manages to whiff the Quaking Punch or the attack, uh, you're able to do anything you want. So actually, Enhanced Hammer, especially in combination with Time Puzzle, is super strong against Toad Giratina. But with the increase of uh, Greninja decks, um, many people opted to play no Toad decks at all, so it's not that commonly played at all anymore because Toad variations just lose to Greninja. So this is my least favorite uh, version of Might March because I think that at Nationals you don't really have to expect that many Toad variations and if you're playing against Toad Giratina and you have a great setup you win anyways. So uh, yeah, so let's say you should play these two cards if you want, if you think that you're going to face many Toad Giratinas or Toad Variations at all, because straight Toad pretty much is an auto loss. Um, so these two cards, they are okay, they can come in handy, but if you just manages to attach two basic water and chase you, you just lose actually. So all right, so let's discard these two cards again. Um, let's prepare for the Greninja matchup. As you know, if Greninja manages to give you an Ace Trainer and then Shadow Stitching, um, you're not able to use the Shamans. You have a hand of four cards after you drew your, your card for the turn and you pretty much need to get everything. So how can you make this deck, this version, more consistent and now we're coming to the way uh, where we have to cut a few cards. Um, so actually I would opt, and I've seen it many times now from winning Nightmark decks, I would play a fourth Shaman. So we are at 59 cards right now. I would play a fourth Shaman. Uh, I would play Escape Rope as well, because Escape Rope just helps you really, really much against Yirachi and Greninja players are playing two of that, or in some cases even three. So if you have the Escape Rope and the Time Puzzle and the Lysander, you pretty much should be able to knock out his Yirachis without wasting a turn. 
So yeah, um, now we are at 60 cards, uh, but I want to have a few more cards here. So actually, I thought about cutting the acrobikes because acrobikes are cool and stuff, but they are not that necessary. And in some cases, you have to do discard a few cards you don't want to discard of an acrobike. So let's say you cut these three acrobikes and add, and now here comes the cool thing because it helps this deck so much with consistency. You add two sycamores. So you play four sycamores and you don't want him to attack with the giant water shuriken uh, to use the ability too often. So you're going to play a second hex maniac. So I would say that actually that this version of the deck is pretty good against Greninja. If you say that you want to play uh, Acrobikes and you expect many Greninjas, you could cut one dimension of Valley because in some cases you just need one and uh, the Greninja player in most cases just play one um, uh, rough seat. So you could cut the Dimensional Valley and you could cut the Target Whistle because the Target Whistle in the in the Greninja matchup is pretty useless, I would say. So you cut these two cards and I actually can't find space for the third acrobike. So you, you can add two acrobikes instead of these two cards. Uh, I think that this version actually has a very good, a very good uh, matchup against Greninja. If you can find space, let's say you cut the fourth shaman for the third acrobike or stuff like that. So you can play around with that. But actually, that in my opinion, this version pretty much is the best um, against Greninja. And for Sycamore just helped this deck so, so crazy well. So it's, it's sick. Um, all right, but if you don't want to say for Sycamore too much and you don't want to play that, it's cool. Because there are, is a card that actually is great in every matchup. In every matchup you face, especially against X decks. Um, so let's say you don't expect that many Greninja decks, um, and you, I don't know, cut the. You, you want to play Free Sycamore, that's cool. Or let's say you cut them both. So we're out in the. In the uh, I'm sorry. So wait, how many cards do we have right now? I think we have 58 again. So now it's 59 because you want to play free dimensional value. Um, it's 59 now, so... Nah, let's cut the dimensional value, you don't need that. Um, so, you want to play around to annoy your opponent. So there is a card that has seen some play lately, which was quite surprising, because Pokemon Catcher Pokemon Catcher Gold! No Pokemon Catcher. Pokemon Catcher here um, is pretty cool, especially against developer decks if you manage to, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, it's a flip card. So um, it's always a bit tricky, but in many cases where you play uh, Pokemon Catcher and you flip hats, you pretty much won the game because you're able to, you, you don't have to use a Lysander, so you can flip hats with Pokemon Catcher and use a, use a supporter afterwards, which is great. But I personally, in my opinion, I don't like flip cards that much, so I wouldn't recommend it. It's good, it's a good as I said, it's good in, in every matchup because a free catching option in that, in that um, and that scenario is, is awesome. But yeah, um, so I'm cutting these two cards again. Um, I got, I uh, have the fourth chain in here as well. So, and here is like my special version of this deck. And this is going to be the final build I'm going to show you. Uh, actually, I think that nobody has played it with that version. So you have seen it here on Pokemon TCG Austria for the first time. And if this deck manages to get quite a few, uh, quite success, 
uh, I want to get the rewards for it. So um, <laughs> let's say we we leave this Pokemon line because it's just the most consistent. Um, target Whistle can be game winning, but I don't think that it's that necessary. So it's okay, it's cool. I think that you can either either uh, think about playing Escape Rope or Target Whistle. So I'm adding the third dimensional value. No, I'm, I'm cutting the third dimensional value. Um, so the thing is that we have to, to think a bit outside the box. I personally like Acrobikes, so I don't want to cut all of them, but I cut one. So we have space for four cards now. And here I'm going to show you my special um, tech card I like because it's it's red card. Yeah, red card is super awesome against every deck, um, especially in the mirror. If you want to beat the mirror, you play this card. You go first, you manage to play it, and you manage to play Hexmaniac as well. Because if you play the, the Nightmarch mirror, you always want to go first. This is very important, you should Try to remember that next time you play against Nightmatch. You always want to go first and try to disrupt your opponent. And you can disrupt your opponent by playing either Judge or Hexmaniac. So that's the thing. Um, but why not both? I thought about it and I realized that the winning strategy against, against um, nearly every deck, if you start, is to shut them down, hope that they don't have too many basic Pokemon, Play red card and hex Manic in combination. So we have three, uh, we have four slots here available. I really want to play a third Sycamore because it just helps the consistency. So we play, we have three slots available. So I really want to play the second hex Manic just to have more options to hex Manic my opponent first turn. So we have two slots open. Um, I want to play escape rope as well so we have one slot open and now we can decide between these three cards um or like the four sycamore but i think actually that i either would take the um uh, whistle or the dimensional valley so it's up to you you can decide i personally would take the dimensional valley because I personally don't think that target... With, I mean, it's cool, you can use it with Pass of Time, especially against Jolteon. But a good Jolteon player actually uh, never banches something and never has something in his discard pile. So, yeah. We have 60 cards here right now. This is my personal favorite build, actually. I think that it should be 60, right? Yeah. Even after. Yeah, it's 60. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think that this is it. These are all the variations, um, especially with this never seen red card combination with not much. So actually your game plan, if you play two of these red cards is to play it in turn one and hex manic your opponent. Uh, you could cut the charge as well, but I personally really like the option to shuffle in your own cards. So you could play Birch if you want to, because in the stack you can get back the red cards with um, Time Puzzle as well. So you could cut the charge for Birch, but you don't really have to because the effect of charge is just pretty good as well. And you don't have the red card every time for turn one. So yeah, actually I think that this is this is the best build for Night March in my option, in my opinion. Um, you should really give it a try, you should try it out and maybe play it on your nationals and if you succeed I really want to shout out. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let us know what you think about this series. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, give us a like, give us a subscribe if you did. And uh, that would be all for me. Next time Lucas go is going to be to make the next video. We don't know about which deck yet, but yeah. Have a great weekend, have fun at Nationals guys, we hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching.